Synology's DSM 7.2 full volume encryption has a massive flaw that makes me very, very, very worried about its implementation. So the Synology DSM 7.2 beta just came out about a week ago, and with it came a feature I was waiting for for a very long time, full volume encryption. This gets around a lot of the really annoying parts about shared folder based encryption, like the number of characters you can have in it as well as the ability to not see all your snapshots because they're each encrypted. It really gets around all that, and I've been very excited for this feature. It's probably been my number one feature that I've been very excited about, but it's got a massive flaw. It's kind of useless by default. So the way full volume encryption works on the Synology, we can go ahead and, and show how this works. I'm currently running the DSM 7.2 beta, and so if we go into Storage Manager, Create, create new volume. We'll give it 200 gigs. We can set up an encrypted volume. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I've just reset the encryption vault. So we have to now create a vault password, right? So this is our vault password. This password stores all the encryption keys. So let's go ahead and enable it. And so now we're going to have this key. Seems very much like shared folder based encryption, right? You've got your key, you've got your thing. And so you would expect it to be able to have a machine key, but it doesn't. That vault does not appear to really be that useful in my opinion, because anyone with a toothpick or one of these little things that allows you to hold the reset button can get into your files if they have access to your NAS, which is a huge issue and genuinely makes me very, very, very worried about this really crucial feature because you think it's encrypted, but it's not. If the encryption key is stored with the data and easily unmounted without any additional authentication, it's not encrypted. So let's go ahead and talk about the way around this really quickly. So there is now the ability to have KMIP, which is key manager over IP. Uh, you can set that up in security right here. And this will allow you to have one NAS hold all the encryption keys and not store it locally, which is great for some people, but not usable for the majority of people who just want regular encryption and just want it to work. Now I like to give a demonstration of exactly what I'm talking about where there's this issue because by default it's set up where the encryption key is on the local encryption key vault. So now let's go ahead and we've got this encrypted volume, right? It is encrypted. So let's go ahead and create a new shared folder in there. So that's a volume based encryption and we're going to put it on volume two, which is encrypted. Now we don't need to additionally encrypt the shared folder and we're good. And now I want to kind of show how this works in comparison to how shared folder encryption works. So the way I set up shared folder encryption, this is the basic shared folder encryption. I always add the keys of the key manager. And so that way we can mount it on boot. And this is great for key, for businesses who want to be able to mount on boot. So now automatically this thing will start up on boot and we can also just very quickly and easily mount this volume just using the key stored in the encryption manager. This is what 95% of people are really looking for for encryption. It protects you from the two things that you're actually worried about. Somebody stealing the NAS or if you have to ship the hard drive off. That way when you do this, your data is encrypted. You know if somebody gets a hard drive or if they even break in and steal the NAS, they're not going to be able to get access to your data because the key manager flushes all the keys as soon as you do a soft reset. That does not happen on here. So let's say we've got sensitive data. So we're going to put some sensitive data in here. I don't know. I'll, I'll upload, upload the screen recording where I actually thought it had full volume encryption properly. So we'll upload that. That's not going to see light of day because I thought this all worked because I just assumed Synology did it correctly and did it, did it the way they were supposed to. So let's say that this is really sensitive data that we're uploading here, right? We want to make sure nobody's got access to it, but we're good. 
it is on an encrypted volume. Right here, volume two, that is encrypted. We can see it's got the lock there, we are good. Um, and the nice thing is this automatically mounts on boot, so we don't have to worry about all that stuff. But now let's go ahead and say I'm a bad actor and I have physical access to the NAS. I've stolen it, I've broken in, and I've walked away with it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do a soft reset on it. So I'm gonna sign myself out over here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in there and I'm just going to do a soft reset by holding the reset button for five seconds or six seconds until I hear the first boot beep. And then I'm gonna be able to get into the NAS and all the encrypted data with no problems whatsoever. So let me go show that. So I'm a bad guy with physical access to the NAS. I just held the reset button for six seconds and you may have heard the beep. And now I'm gonna wait for a second for the, the reset to go. And I'm gonna show you what I'm able to do. So right here, we just did the soft reset, which is a great feature. It allows you to very easily get back into your NAS, but I'm gonna type in admin as the username and no password. So that's something you can do with a soft reset. Okay, so this allows us to reset the admin's credentials. So this is great, we forgot our password. We can now get back into the NAS. So I can make up whatever username and password I want to here. Really, really easy. So I'm gonna create a new password. I don't know the old one, I'm a bad actor. I have no idea about this NAS at all, but all I know is I was able to just do a soft reset there. Perfect. So now I'm gonna update that password and just type in the new one. The one that I just created a second ago without knowing any information about this NAS other than the fact that it's on this network and having physical access to it. Now let's go into file station. Oh, that data I can download. I didn't have any access to anything. I did not know the encryption key. I'm not a user. I have zero authority to get into this folder, but because I was able to have physical access to it for more than six seconds and hold the soft reset button and log in and reset the admin password, I now have full access to the data. I have access to all the encrypted data on there. Let's go in and we can even go into storage manager and we can see, boom, we're good. We've got access to it. We can, even if we wanted to, regenerate the encryption key. Boom, I just regenerated the encryption key and now I've got the only co working copy of the encryption key. It is complete and total access to it, all without having anything. When it reboots, it's still going to mount. Now, what should happen? What should happen is what happened here. So I selected mount on boot for demo. But since I did a soft reset, the encryption key, if we look at the key manager, is gone. That, that key manager is just gone. And so now if I tried to mount this, so right there, I now have to enter the encryption key. So that means that without extra knowledge, I cannot get stuff in this demo encrypted folder. But I could on the volume encryption. So mounting on boot is great. That's a great feature. Why is that encryption manager not flush as soon as you do a soft reset? I'd be fine if somebody was able to basically go in and if they knew what they were doing, be able to bring all the hard drives into a Linux box, that would be better if they were able to find the encryption key like that. Because you know, that takes a lot of effort, that's extra steps, technically the data is there, but it's hard to get to. That would be better than this, where any dum dum with a push pin who can hold the reset button can get into all your encrypted data. That is a huge issue. They need to make sure that that encrypted volume is not able to just be mounted on boot. That encrypted volume needs to auto eject if you try to do a soft reset on the NAS. I don't know why it's not. So that's a big issue and it's kind of a retraction. I love the encrypted volume, it's great, but unless you have it on a KMIP server where you actually have additional authentication, I've not messed with that enough yet because I don't have enough boxes on DSM 7.2, the full volume encryption locally stored currently, in my opinion, is pretty much useless. Genuinely, 
I'm not sure if it would even protect you if a RAID 1 drive died, because Synology mirrors everything across a RAID 1 volume. I think it, you still would have access to the data. So right now, other than making you feel good inside, which it shouldn't, I don't think Synology DSM 7.2 is beta, at least in beta. So remember, this is in beta. Synology has time to fix this before going all the way out. Right now, it's not actually encrypting the data in a useful fashion whatsoever, because anybody with a thumb deck can get access to any encrypted folders if they have physical access to the NAS, which physical access is the one thing encryption is supposed to protect you against. So I'm going to be posting and having updates on this on the forums. So go ahead and check that out. There's a link for that in the description because hopefully it does update. But as of right now, it makes me very worried, especially because this was one of the features I was looking forward to most on Synology DSM 7.2 beta.